Yeah. I don't want to sit here and wait for 10 minutes for either. It's 5.30, I'll call the meeting to order. Our first item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Mosul, will you read our mission statement, please? The mission of the Marshall Public School District is to educate, support, and prepare all learners for success. Thank you. Next item is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Jeff and seconded by Sarah. Approve the agenda. Any discussion? Not. I'll call for the vote. That is approved. Next item is our tiger spotlight. So tonight we want to recognize Samu. Sa, if you want to come up front here, we're going to present you a certificate here in just a minute. Sa um, has resigned from Marshall Public Schools. Today is actually his last day. He was probably done a couple hours ago and waited around just to come and see you guys this <laughs> afternoon. So lucky Sa. Uh, Sa started with, the, with Marshall Public Schools in July of 2016. He's been an integral part of our parent student connector team for the last seven years. He's worked endlessly to ensure that the needs of our Korean families are being met. It was not uncommon for him to meet with our families when they were available, which often was nights and weekends. We appreciate Sa's dedication to Marshall Public Schools and we wish him the best. So Sa, we wanna say thank you. Um, we've got a certificate here for you and give you a hand. What are you gonna do with UCAP, Sa? What are you going to be doing at UCAP? Uh, I'm applying for the position of the case manager. Good for you. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Sa. Thanks, Sa. Thank you, Sa. Can I say a few things? If you want to say something, sure. I prepared to say something. We got to waste some time anyway. I'm a little nervous, but uh, the last time I was here back in 2018, so I feel a little much better. At that time, I was T9 for two, and his suit was gone that night, so but. I get when I'm leaving, nobody following me. <laughs> <laughs> you so, learned we're not all that scary. So. Yes. I just would like to say um, I'm very humble and thank you for your recognition tonight. First, I would like to say thank you to all Marshall Public School employees, staff, teacher, district leader, and student and family over the years for their support, dedication, and their passion toward education and working with me and my families. So without them, I will not have done any, uh, my job any better and successfully. I really appreciate for the opportunity here. I'm so proud to work for Marshall Public School. I'm, I'm always like to share the successful story of um, what we are doing here in the district. So I'm going to miss working with my family, teacher and staff and students. Um, in my announcement uh, letter to my family, then was pride, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm also has a mid feeling of leaving my public school. I feel sad. At the same time, I would like to move in on uh, to a new adventure. So I remind my family and students that I work with in the great state of Minnesota, much public. I strongly believe much a public school is a very dedicated commitment to educate, support, and prepare all learners for success. I wish you and much public school the best moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sa. Thank you, Sa. Hmm. Our next item is a public forum. Is there anybody from the public like to approach the board? Moving on to our presentations, our solar panels. Welcome, Brock. My name is Brock Johnson from Solar Connection. We're the ones that uh, work with Dion and, and Warren to develop the, the solar projects on the schools. Um, 
So just going to get through this pretty efficiently. And then uh, Peter Lindstrom from CERTS, he, he actually just called me. So I'm hoping he, uh, he come, gets here pretty soon. But uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions um, after this. So uh, the Solar for Schools presentation, or the Solar for Schools program um, was developed in 2021 through the Department of Commerce along with the help of CERTS, the Clean Energy Resource Team that is a uh, division of extension of the U of M. Um, basically, they, the state wanted to incentivize schools, more solar installations across schools across the state. So um, they had a program budget in that first round of $7.2 million, and they determined who, what schools you know, met the criteria or would get uh, preference based off of the um, adjusted net tax capacity divided by the adjusted pupil units, of which Marshall fell into the 85% grant category, meaning you could get 85% uh, of the solar project costs in a grant from the state. Uh, we applied for five projects um, and got approved for all of them. So um, we were still waiting on the CTE building to, to get connected, uh, but the other four are up and running. So um, we're very proud of the fact that the Marshall, four Marshall School projects that are turned on were the first four projects through the state program. A good accomplishment. Um, just to give you a little idea, maybe some of you are familiar with solar, maybe you're not, but the way uh, solar energy works, this picture has the panels uh, oriented on the roof, yours are all on the ground, but same concept. The power comes in from the sun in DC, uh, it goes to an inverter electrical panel that converts it to AC, and then it goes to your use or onto the grid. So it's connected to your meter as well as the utility grid. Um, so whenever you're using power you're going to draw and solar's producing, you're going to draw directly from solar first. And when you're not getting enough from solar, you're going to draw from the grid and vice versa. Um, we also set up a, the inverters um, into, you, into the school's Wi-Fi so that there's real-time monitoring of the production of the array um, and the components of it itself. So if there's ever an issue, we get an alert about it. Uh, Dion and, and Warren have the, the app too, so they can see live production, historic production, et cetera. Um, one question real quick we get all the time, well, how, you know, winters can be pretty, pretty brutal in Minnesota. Does, you know, how well does solar even work here? This is a, a U.S. Uh, solar radiance map. This is using the month of May, which we're in. So as you can see, Minnesota, um, gets about the same production as, as half of Texas in the month of May. Southwest U.S. is always going to be the best for, for solar in the U.S., but Minnesota still uh, gets plenty of, of sun energy. Here's an actual snip of the, um, the monitoring platform app. So this first graph over on the left shows the year-to-date, month-by-month production. There's Peter. Um, so as you can see in January, uh, January wasn't, wasn't that great this year, and, and usually production is going to be lower then. Um, but you still got you know, 20 to 30 percent of what the, the peak will be. And then as you can see, February was a pretty big <coughs> jump up. March a little bit more. April um, was a jump up again. And May, we were only about a third of the way through the, the month. But it's going to be on a bell curve. June, July, August are going to be your peaks, and then it'll start falling off again. The graph over to the right is um, for that particular day. So as you can see in the morning, the solar panels kind of wake up as the sun comes out. It's going to peak around the you know, two, three o'clock hours and then start tailing off again. Um, how we came to, to the location <coughs> of the, the solar array. So we met with Dion and, and Warren and also spoke with the utility and the city about they all, you know, it's got to be where the school wants them, what works best for solar from an electrical standpoint, um, what works for the utility, and for permitting purposes as well. So um, long story short, these are, these are the locations that we uh, selected. We don't have any drone pictures yet, so I'm using the, the um, initial aerial snips that we use. But the middle school right out here, we're, we're right by the chiller, and we're tied into that electrical service. Um, South view, being that was new, there wasn't a <coughs> map yet, but that's right across um, the driveway. And then we just bored underneath and connected right into the service there. 
Parkside is up in the northwest corner, and then we board over to the electrical service. Um, I know there was a couple of small trees or something there that were going to be removed, but uh, that's kind of a, a good spot out of the way. And then the high school on the north side of the parking lot, and then we board over to the uh, electrical service there, which that one was a little bit longer of a wire run, uh, but still a good place for the, the solar project. And then CTE with the, the renovations that are going on there and the changes in the electrical, um, that's kind of the, the spot that we identified that would be good for the solar project. You can just trench over and tie into the new service there. <coughs> um, as far as the financial benefits to the district, so the overall cost of all five projects was around 585000 of that, the school district um, received a grant for 85% of that, leaving an out-of-pocket cost of about $88,000 to the school. Um, how are you going to see that out-of-pocket cost back? The expected annual energy production is going to range somewhere between 325 and 340,000 kilowatt hours, which will give you around $22,000 a year of electricity savings, basically energy that you're not going to have to buy from the utility. Um, so as utility rates are expected to keep increasing over time, they become more valuable as, as the years go on. So the estimated 30 year savings to the school would be about $700,000 across all five projects. The year to date benefits, um, as of a few days ago, they had produced 83,550 kilowatt hours with the highest production months, uh, yet ahead. And, uh, savings year to date of about $5,400. On top of the financial savings are the environmental and educational benefits as well. Um, these are kind of cool environmental equivalencies to show, you know, the, the amount of energy produced from the solar projects is equivalent to offsetting about 26,000 gal gallons of gasoline consumed each year, 258,000 pounds of coal burned, or energy to offset about 44 um, homes in the U.S. Um, on top of the environmental benefits, the Solar for Schools program really emphasized curriculum development as well. So we met with Beth Ritter leading up to the grant application, used some uh, curriculum templates by, uh, that was developed by CERTS, um, and some of those have been used, I believe, already with some of the uh, K through 12 uh, learnings. And as far as solar education, there's a lot of learnings across math, science, and the electrical trades, with solar being a very fast-growing job market. Um, it's going to be relevant for, for quite a while. So. <clears throat> Here's uh, just a couple of pictures that Dion shared to me, with me um, of Earth Day and some of the classes that were out at the solar array, so that's pretty cool to see. Um, with that, that's, that's kind of the, my rundown, and um, I'll introduce Peter Lindstrom. He's from the Clean Energy Resource Team. I know he just would like to say a few words. So. I would indeed. Greetings, everybody. I'm Peter Lindstrom from the Clean Energy Resource Teams, and we have the pleasure of serving as the designated technical assistance provider for the state of Minnesota for this grant program. CERTS is a bit of a unique organization in that um, we're uh, a, a public-private uh, partnership and we're headquartered at the University of Minnesota, but we have seven regions and regional coordinators and our regional coordinator for the Southwest, um, Jason Walker, is here with us this afternoon from Slayton area. Um, so I just really want to double down for a second um, about uh, what Brock um, touched on. First of all, I just want to say congratulations. You know, as Brock mentioned, this is one of the first, these are some of the first solar arrays uh, through this grant program. And um, so you are really the leaders in this area. There are a number of schools that have solar already, but you're one of the first to have implemented it solar through this grant program. There's probably about 190 or so schools across the state that have some sort of solar, either a real small couple of kilowatt array up to very, very large size. 
And there's probably about 80 or so schools that have um, applied or are going through this grant program so far. Uh, and the reasons that schools are interested in this, what I hear when I talk to schools, it's, it's really three or so big buckets. First of all, it's the sustainability components of this are, are clear. Um, and it's a great way to demonstrate to your taxpayers that sustainability is a key value for the district. Also, the financial benefits, no doubt about it. When I talk to districts, um, they tell me that that utility bill that you have to pay every month is oftentimes the second highest, maybe third highest expense for the district. And then, as Brock uh, touched on, clearly the uh, integrating the arrays in, into the curriculum. Um, I like to think that today's youth are tomorrow's energy decision makers. So there'll be decision makers on energy technologies, energy public policy, energy markets, and energy jobs. And again, as Brock said, these are some of the fastest growing jobs we have in the nation. I think just in Minnesota alone, solar jobs grew by, I think, 10%. And we have about 60,000 jobs um, in the clean energy sector across Minnesota. So um, the fact that the students can can see it every day as they're walking into school and and go out there to the arrays and um, and see it in action is just a I think it's going to be a great benefit uh, for the, dis the district and for the region. So again on behalf of the state of Minnesota um, congratulations on a job well done and I will tell you if security is of an interest I checked every single door <laughs> before I made it into, into that one and uh, they're all locked so great job everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure you've answered this before, probably, but what's the what's involved in the maintenance and the the lifespan of these solar panels? Yeah, great great question. So um, the panels that we use all come with a 25 year warranty, which is very standard in solar now. So um, what the warranty basically says is, at the end of 25 years, they'll be no less than 80 percent of what they were year one. Um, other than that, they're they're a fixed tilt system, so there's no moving parts. Um, they sit there and produce energy. The inverters, which most of the arrays that you guys have, there's two inverters on them that convert from DC to AC. Part of the grant program is you have to estimate in the cost of replacement of those, which they have a 10-year warranty on them. So we factor about year 15, you're going to have to replace the inverters. So over a 30-year lifespan, hopefully only replacing the inverters one time. Um, other than that, you know, it's just... Keeping the keeping the grass mowed, keeping them looking nice. Um, if there ever is an issue, that's what we're here for. But uh, long-term warranties on the on the project. I told Matt um, we were out there earlier, and there's standing water around there right now. So we are planning at the end of the meeting to go out there and do a photo opportunity. If you guys are able to stick around, um, that's at the end of the meeting. I feel the things to go through, but we won't get real close because we don't want no one about their mud boots. So. <laughs> yeah, I was out there too. I, I saw there was a little soggy mess. Up. Yeah. <laughs> We had a lot of rain this weekend, so yeah. thank you. Yeah, thanks, thank you. guys. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Appreciate it. You too. Thank you. Our next item is approval of the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Bill Molso and seconded by Jeff. <clears throat> we'll call for the vote. Consent agenda is approved. Next item is our financial report, approval of the bills for April and May. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Thanks, Jeff. Any discussion, Dion? Uh, yeah, I won't go through a lot of them. I had emailed Sarah earlier today some of the breakdowns of some of the, the larger ones, but there are a few. Um, hotels and there's an airline one on here um, that is for things like BPA State, BPA Nationals, girls basketball. Um, when it comes to BPA a lot of that's paid through student activities. So, um, that's 
see, show your, point those out so you know that the, uh, what they're used for. Thanks, Dion. I'll call for the vote. <clears throat> And the bills are paid. Discussion on the treasurer's report. Anything there, Dion? Uh, just like each month, just point out on page two, the general fund um, budget compared to actual, we're 0.22% away from what budget it is. Hopefully that's the I'm sure it will. <laughs> Thank you. Next item is board forum, board reports or updates. Any updates? I'll be attending a staff development committee end of the year meeting with uh, Beth next Monday. I attended a meeting with the crisis team, which I haven't been a part of ever. And it's really interesting. Um, their main planning right now is in, in case of a crisis at any one of our schools, where to send our kids. and where do they tell the parents to go? And, and it's just a huge organizational logistic thing to get through. And it's just so interesting the, the detail that our administrators have thought of things that will come up if anything, God forbid, ever happens. So it's just, I just thought it was really interesting. So I didn't say much, I just listened, so. Question on the safety thing. In reading the legis some of the legislative stuff, they were, <clears throat> talking about doing away with Alice? Yeah, I saw that too. Have you heard anything on that, Jeremy? I hadn't heard about getting, getting rid of it completely, but I'll have to look into that. Uh, there were some changes and some things with Alice, and we're always following the, okay. the updates with that. But Some changes that they're... Yeah, that's, I had heard there were some changes. I, I'm not familiar with all the I think the big thing was they're doing away with limiting the amount of simulations you do. You can yeah, do drills, that. but the actual simulations, there was some discussion that it can be kind of traumatic and so they wanted to limit some of that. And I would assume Alice, That's some of that training. So it's all through Alice and Alice very much scripts what we can do with some of that, so yeah. So that bill is gonna pass probably? It sounds like it's likely to pass, yeah. I don't no. know if that one has passed. I don't yet, think but, it's not done yet, no. Yeah. No simulations basically is what was in there, right? Yeah, I think but so. Still it, it's still some drills. There's still, still drills, drills, but the simulation is what yeah. was what right. was limited. Right. Okay which we don't really do that part anyway, so. <clears throat> Moving on, our next item is administrative reports. Um, a lot of things to share tonight. It's busy time in all the schools, so a lot of really good stuff going on. I wanna share some, some updates. Um, first thing I wanna share is last week, the Maytech staff, we had to go with them over to the SS building at SMSU. Um, we got a tour of that site. That's where the, we'll be moving the ALC in the next couple of years. I got to walk through the architect and look at that, I walk through classroom spaces, um, the shared rec space, the cafeteria, and just talk about the planned remodeling work. I'm hoping for a successful passage of some additional bonding dollars um, with, that would help the full scope of the project, but even without that, um, the project's gonna move forward. Uh, the idea is that construction will take place next year and move in for the fall of 24. So um, that's gonna be a really nice facility. It was fun to walk through with staff and talk about um, the potential and kind of the future of, of that space for us. Legislatively, that is that bonding piece for us is being carried by people in the Senate and the House yep. for us. Yep. Yep. It's all out there, and that's the co op is helping work through that part. But yeah, yeah. we're hoping that will happen. Um, we've also begun work on the 23 24 operational plan for the district for and for each site. Um, last year, when we updated our strategic plan, we created the new operational plan that's designed to be updated annually. So it's a little different format with the strategic planning that we've done in the past. Um, so we're going through our first uh, review of kind of how last year went and starting to plan for next year. So uh, next Thursday, we've got an administrative retreat planned and a lot of that day is gonna be spent working on the new operational plan and reviewing where we're at goal wise and what the next year looks like. Um, it's been some good work, some good conversations so far. Looking forward to that, kind of seeing how that goes through with the admin team next week as we work through the first update of that plan. Early childhood shares of the threes preschool program spots are filled for next year. Um, we started a waiting list for next year with the threes, the fours VPK, we still have a few spots available. So families that have four year olds are looking for preschool for next year, um, be a good time to con contact our early childhood department with that. Um, they've started um, sending out placement letters and another follow up letter will take place during the summer for that. Uh, they also shared, and this was true for all sites, but for teacher appreciation, we've had a lot of outreach from the community that was really appreciated last week. 
Uh, Walmart brought some donations and cookies. Uh, Keller Williams Realty brought a box of snacks for teachers. Hy-Vee had um, some cookies and they made donation of $5 Starbucks cards to all the, all the teachers. And the PTO, PTO shared cookies, our PTA shared cookies in appreciation for staff. So there are lots of treats in all the lounges and such last week. But uh, it's nice to see the, the connections with community members reaching out and saying, hey, we want to recognize the teachers that week too. So it's very much appreciated all those businesses. Parkside shares kindergarten students were excited to welcome their grandparents and special friends to a classroom last week. They had uh, grandparents day, kindergarten students. Um, they went to the lunchroom, they made bookmarks, they played roll a grandparent. I'm not really sure what that was. I hope we didn't roll a grandparent sound, roll them around the cafeteria, but that's what it said. And they did a sheet all about grandma and grandpa. That's always fun with kinder kindergartners too, talking about then versus now. So those I'm sure would have been fun to read. Um, they also look forward to celebrations at the end of the year, like all the sites do, but uh, Parkside's doing kindergarten and first grade um, field trips, uh, going out to the YMCA, kindergarten Gordon Garvin Park. And this year they're having field day as well. It's gonna be on May 31st. Staff and students are just looking forward to kind of wrap up the year and say, see you next year. So a lot of fun things taking place there and hopefully the weather holds. If it's anything like today, it'll be um, good to take them outside and run around and play a little bit. Southview shares, uh, the MEA re recently recognized two staff members that both had me from Southview this year um, for their dedication in the field of education. Nicole Wickman, she's the admin assistant at Southview. She was recognized as the MEA Friend of Education Award winner. And Amanda Jellen was recognized as the Sears Teacher of the Year from the MEA. So congratulations to both of them. Um, both very deserving staff members, if you guys know those two, they work um, tirelessly for our kids and do a great job connecting with kids and really making Southview is safe and um, welcoming place for, for everybody. So congratulations to Nicole and Amanda for that. Uh, third and fourth graders also recently celebrated Earth Day, going around and picking up trash around Southview and middle school. And I think one of the pictures was Southview in the solar panels earlier. So that was, that was fun. They did a nice job picking up things. I think they picked one of those days was like today and said, let's go pick up trash. And they found a lot of things to pick up following winter. Middle school shares um, reading, math, and science MCA tests are now complete. We're getting, we're getting there. The end of the year is coming close. So we're doing NWA testing now. That will all wrap up on May 19th. Um, recent PBIS celebration at middle school. They had relay races and a pie eating contest. The kids had a lot of fun down there with that. Um, they also recognize students showing Tiger Pride. One of the things the middle school does is a U Rock Award. They have a rock they distribute to a staff member that was nominated by um, students, I believe. This year they nominated, or this month they nominated Eileen Bloomy. Um, she's retiring at the end of the school year and um, they gave her the U Rock Award. So that was a nice presentation by them too. Eileen appreciated that. And certainly um, well deserved there for the job she's done in our district over the last, I think, 42 years of working in our copy center. Um, May 24th, so coming up, the high school and the middle school are gonna combine their monthly building wide PLC meetings. This is gonna take place at the high school with a purpose to be introducing middle school to how BAR framework has helped to improve student outcomes for ninth grade students by focusing on continuous improvement of student, student, staff, student, and staff, staff relationships, and continually, to look, continually looking at data to inform professional practice. High school teachers are gonna to present to their high school and middle school colleagues in order to help inform both staffs how the BAR framework has helped improve a variety of processes at the high school while at the same time helping students to be more successful and to earn more credit. Members of the BAR program are gonna be on site to help answer questions that staff may have. So actually some of the um, people that coordinate BAR across the nation are gonna be on site that day for that presentation. So um, one of the conversations we're having for next year is looking at bringing BAR into the middle school. Um, as middle school has talked about kind of what next year should look like and some things that they'd like to do there. Um, we feel like this could be a, a good fit. So this conversation coming up between the two staffs will be really good for high school teachers that aren't using BAR as much right now. Those aren't just part of the program. And then middle school teachers wanting to know more. Good opportunity to learn and decide if that's the right direction to go for um, middle school in particular. High school has a lot of dates um, and school board members, I think Emily has sent out invitations for these things too, but just a reminder to you and to the community a lot of things coming up as we wrap up the school year here. Annual scholarship award ceremony is scheduled for this Wednesday, May 17th, beginning at 7 p.m. at the high school. As we've done the last couple of years, it's gonna take place um, in the high school gymnasium instead of, we used to do that over at SMSU. Um, it's the uh, take a box of dessert treats when it's done, but nice, really nice presentation, Pride in the Tiger um, host to recognize our seniors at the scholarship ceremony. Uh, also on Tuesday, May 23rd, we're having the annual honors convocation. Just a really nice event for students in grades nine through 12. It's recognizing all students for academic achievement at the high school. 
um, incoming and graduating students from the Minnesota or the Marshall Honor Society, as well as students have earned activities achievement will be recognized at that event. Uh, reminder for the board members and the community that students graduating the class of 2023 and beyond, um, we're changing a little bit how we recognize honors with that, with that group starting this year. The Laud Latin model will be used to recognize um, academic achievement or excellence. The following levels of academic honors will be used. Cum Laude for with distinction, that's cumulative GPA of 3.5 to 3.74. Magna Cum Laude with great distinction, the cumulative GPA of 3.75 to 3.99. And Summa Cum Laude with highest distinction for GPAs of 4.0 and above. Um, high school does not academically rank students, uh, currently does not academically rank, th rank them that way, so that's a change this year, and I think it'll be a nice way to recognize all students for their academic success. It's been something we've been talking about, about for the last four years, kind of building it in since this class was freshman, so this would be the first graduating year where that's gonna look different at graduation. And then, of course, the 135th commencement and uh, commencement exercises, I get goosebumps when I said 135th, um, will be held on Friday, June 2nd, that's at 7 p.m., Studio One will be live streaming the event. Um, board members, you're all invited to attend that. It's a great, um, just a great event to have and to have board members that recognize all of our students. So I encourage you to join us for that event on June 2nd. Maytech shares as we get closer to the end of the year, I'm planning to honor seniors at graduation there as well. Maytech graduation is Friday, May 26th. That's the senior's last day. Um, that ceremony is at 2 p.m. at Maytech. So anyone able to attend that, we encourage you to join us for that one as well. Um, be honoring students who successfully met the 30 and a half credit requirements through Marshall Public Schools. Uh, Amanda also shares that credit recovery is taking place this summer again. We've hired five teachers for high school program and one teacher's aid. Classes are gonna be held at the high school again this year. We've done that last few years. It's gonna run from June 7th through June 30th and counselors at high school may tech are, but they're busy this time of year. But one of the things they're doing is helping identify students who are in need of this uh, credit recovery and contacting students to get them registered hoping to have concrete numbers as far as registrations by May 31st for that. Uh, Beth shares in her report, she wants to recognize the teachers that have been part of the letters programming. So those of you following the legislative um, things this year and following some updates from MDE, they've talked a lot about letters training. It's a comprehensive professional development designed um, to provide educators and admin the knowledge and just understanding of literacy and language and acquisition, looking at the science of reading. We have 17 teachers within the districts that have been fidging, finishing up the modules in this training. It's a big commitment they've taken on and they volunteered to do this, um, do this for us um, and just to help improve their own professional development and then take it back and share with their peers. So we wanna say thank you to this group of teachers, um, including Amanda Grinager, Jody Lixton, uh, Teresa Leek, Esther Karen, Elizabeth Maxwell, Krista Sherman, Darcy Love, Emily Carroll, Kelly Konitzko, Amy Barker, Emily Hoppy, Jamie Brigger, My Song, Heather Sorovi, Jessica Novstead, Beth Ritter, and Tiffany Teske. Um, they put a lot of hours into this training. They're learning a lot of great things and passing that on amongst other teachers. So it's certainly a statewide initiative that um, this group has just seen the value in that and bringing it back into our classrooms right here in Marshall. So really appreciate the work that they've done with that. Um, Beth also shares in her report that the, um, we're recognizing the 23-24 CEO class. So for the next year's CEO group, they had the signing day was last Wednesday. Um, students got to come listen to current CEO students about everything in the program. Um, there are six students signed up for next year for Marshall High School, two from Murray County and five from Tracy area. It was a nice event, recognizing those students, welcoming them to the program and just kind of getting them kicked off for that um, as they're getting ready to start for next year. I also want to remind the board that the CEO trade show is scheduled for Wednesday the 24th. That's next Wednesday. You're going to have to like quit your day jobs to come attend all these things. Um, so 24th at True Shrimp in Ballotin. It's from 5 until 7 that evening. And it's going to be held in conjunction with a business after hours event. That's going to be a really nice event too, as students are selling their items and their products and just talking about the program. It's a great program. I encourage you to join us for that. Finally, um, SPED in Jackie's update this month, she shares that with upcoming plans to locate Maytech in the share, shared building space with a service co-op, the Ed Learning Center, um, we've decided to close the Marshall Learning Center program at the conclusion of this year. We knew that with these programs being located together in one location, it likely wouldn't require a setting three program in a smaller setting, the middle school and high school. So the resignation of the teacher from that program this year, it just became a natural transition to do that a year ahead of when we were gonna do that, um, closing the program this year in preparation for the anticipated move. So we'll still staff, we'll still provide services for those students, just if we're gonna end up in the same building rather than staffing that for one year, that, that learning center will close at the conclusion of this year um, in prep for that. So I, we're working on that and that's gonna go well as well. That's what I have, Dan. Um, it's not in my report, but um, we talked today. We had a 
our weekly CTI meeting. Um, as you all, Jeremy shared with everybody, we got our permit last week, so we'll mm -hmm. be seeing a little more action out there. Um, and then we'll provide the board with some uh, at least monthly, if not more, updates, pictures, like we did with some of our other projects. So it's exciting uh, to see things going. Um, yeah. And then in my report, I basically just outlined um, a special thanks to Eileen, uh, Bloomy, Chuck Muller, and Rick Johnson uh, for all their years of service, what they've done for the district over the years, and then shared some pictures of uh, Megan Esping, who will be taking um, the Copy Center Specialist position. She's actually started today training and then uh, Rodney and Robert. Uh, Robert's first day was today. Rodney's been with us since November. Those are our two um, maintenance, uh, good backgrounds. Um, Rodney has really shown great work over the last uh, four or five months now. Uh, very excited, you know, obviously we'll miss Chuck and Rick, but uh, excited to have those two on board. Pretty good, thank you. Next item, discussion items, a second review of policies 611 to 615. Any questions on those? No big changes in any of these policies this time around. And the first review of policies 616, 618, 619, 620, 623, and 624. I see no major changes in those. No major either. changes there either. Okay. No, just regular updates. <clears throat> Our next item is an action, the resolution awarding the sale of general obligation school building bond seri series 2023A. Jody, you couldn't time that much better. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Bill Mosso and seconded by Sarah Brink. Discussion, welcome Jody. Just Good in time. Good evening. Great to see you guys. Good to see you again. I know. What a beautiful night. What a beautiful day. Great results that we have from you from the bond sale. You have a sale day report, I think. It's attached. Perfect. So I'll just highlight a few things in there. Um, the first page uh, is the uh, summary of the results. So you'll see that you received three bids. And we did go through the rating process. Dion represented you very well through that process again with Moody's. So they did assign their uh, AA1 Minnesota Credit Enhanced Rating as well as affirmed your underlying rating of A1. And then as I mentioned, you got three bids. A low bidder was bared on Milwaukee, Wisconsin at just under 3%. So 2.99 and then the other bids were very closely followed behind and we'll go through those in a minute. Um, but you'll see in the notes underneath the summary of sale results that that rate is below what we estimated. So we were thinking we'd be at about a 3.43 when we put together the pre-sale estimates for you. So nice to see that come in below 3%. And we did get a little bit higher premium bid. So that allows you to have about $26,000 more for construction costs, which is great news too. We're closing on the bonds June 8th and you have the resolution before you. And I'll just briefly cover the attachments too. So the bid tab is the first attachment on page one. And you'll see Baird as the low bidder, again, just under 3%. And then Hilltop and out of Dallas, Texas, and Northland out of Minneapolis were really close together, 3.0632 and 3.0646. Um, the next schedule is the sources and uses schedule. Again, that shows the amount that you'll have available to cover project costs. The exact same schedule that we included in your pre-sale report just updated for the results of the sale now. Uh, page three is the detailed debt service schedule. So these bonds will be paid back pretty quickly, um, done by um, February 1st of 2029. So Deanne will be here to write that check. And then uh, the, uh, the detailed long-term debt plan that we've shown you a number of times is now updated to include this bond sale too. So that detailed schedule with your existing debt, this bond issue, and then the combined totals on page four. And then that chart, I think, which is the one that we really like to keep an eye on. So this is your total estimated debt service levy. So the levy for 2023 has been finalized. So that little dotted line above that chart is the amount, um, the payment amount that you'll pay with funds on hand. So you're not gonna levy for that first interest payment, but that tax rate did come down quite a bit with the growth in your tax base. And then we're scheduled to keep it at about that same level for taxes payable in 24, then with some step downs going forward. So 
got some flexibility if you need to do anything in the future at those points in time. And then next is the uh, press release that Moody's issued on your behalf. That goes for a few pages. And then finally, they also issue a second report, which starts on uh, page 11 at the bottom, and that is your detailed credit opinion. So it goes into a little bit more depth on many of the topics that we talked about, the different factors that are included in their um, rating analysis. And then finally, on page 14, I'll just point out that um, they do put together a scorecard, and their scorecard indicated outcome is one notch above the rate that they have assigned to you. So that just kind of gives us an indication that hopefully at some point in time you're poised to get an upgrade. And they, I think they feel like there's too much uncertainty around state funding. The legislature isn't quite done with its work yet. And then um, with inflationary pressures and uh, salaries and benefits yet to be determined through contact, nego contract negotiations, I think they just kind of want to have a little bit more firm information about the district, but we'll continue to work toward um, getting in that double A category, would, which would be really nice. So that's what I have. Good. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have on the resolution itself, too. So I know you have that updated now with the sale results from today, also. Any questions for Jody? Well, thank you for the work that you and your entire team does, so we of appreciate course. it. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to be of service to you again. I'm glad you'll have a little bit more money to get some projects done. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah. Thank you, Jody. Yeah. Thanks, Jody. Thank you. I will call for the vote. We have to have a motion first, don't we? We got it. We got it. We did it already. Bonds is approved. And we're going to go outside and see the solar panels now. We'll see the solar panels, yeah. And then I'll adjourn the meeting after we yeah, walk through the water. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not walking through the water, so I got my dress shoes in. <laughs>